Hi again. My engine is going to be three and a half times the size of the original design by Stan Bray. And it's also going to look very different because much of the design is going to be different. The one similarity is that the cylinder is going to be square on the outside, just like Stan's original. Here we have a drawing of the cylinder and the piston, giving the dimensions of my version. And I'm going to make the cylinder out of cast iron. So I bought these two pieces of square cast iron bar from College Engineering in the UK and I decided to use the bigger of the two. So here is me facing off the section of that with a face mill, squaring it off to make it nice and regular in shape. That's that done. And then I mounted it in the four jaw chuck in the vise and clocked it in so that it was running as true as possible because you don't want the bore of the cylinder to be anything other than parallel to the outside faces. I then started to drill it using a succession of drills going from smaller up to the biggest drill that I have in the lathe. And then I bored it to size with uh, a boring bar held in the tool post. And there is the cylinder board framed against the evening sky, looking not too bad. That's just finished with the boring bar. And there it is sitting on my surface plate. And the next step is uh, honing the cylinder. So I used a traditional three stone cylinder hone and some honing oil. And you just hold that in a drill chuck and you spin it and you use plenty of oil and you push it in and out of the bore and that gives the bore a nice satiny finish. You don't want it too, too shiny, you want a very fine cross hatched pattern to hold the oil. And the secret is to not pull the stones right out of the end of the bore but to keep part of the stones in the bore right the way through the stroke so that you don't end up with a bell mouth on the cylinder. Next up I used a dummy piston made of brass super glued onto a piece of steel bar to test the, the fit and see how the cylinder functioned in terms of suction and so on and I was very pleased to note that it runs very smoothly the, the piston ran very smoothly in the bore and the, the suction created by the piston was really quite impressive when you put your hand over the open end of the bore I then started to make the cap, which is made of another thin slice of that cast iron bar. I'm only using a chop saw to, a miter saw to cut it, so it's pretty rough cut. But you know, I managed to turn it down okay. And here I've turned a spigot in the inside of the cap, which will fit in the end of the bore. And then marking out the cylinder for the holes, which will be drilled and tapped for the screws that hold the cap to the cylinder. There's a tapping operation. And now I'm using a transfer punch to uh, mark out onto the cap the where the hole should be. The cap was fitted and then the cylinder was again squared off so that the cap and the cylinder are square in the same planes. And then I used a corner rounding end mill to round it once again into a nice finished shape. I then used a coaxial indicator to re-center the cylinder in the mill with the cap in situ so that I could then drill the hole for the check valve that admits the steam to the cylinder. And that has to be central um, because it's activated by a pin in the end of the piston. So that was centered with the coaxial indicator, then the cap was put back on and then it was drilled and now you see it being tapped, more or less. And then there's a trial fit of the valve which sits nicely in the end of the cylinder head. And then I wanted to recess it so that the valve would sit in the right position so I milled a recess and there is that counter board if you will. And then the valve was fixed back into the cap and the end of the valve reached the face of the inside of the, the spigot in the cap quite nicely. And here I am given a Myford Boy style fondle, which is something that is good to do with parts that you're pleased with. 
So there is the cylinder with the cap finished and the valve in situ. And you'll see the exhaust port on one side of the cylinder. There's another one the same on the other side. I then wanted to make uh, tapped holes, blind holes, in the cylinder wall, the outside of the cylinder wall, to fix the lateral support bars which will anchor the cylinder into the frame. And because I wanted the thread to go down to the bottom of these blind holes, I ground the end of a, a tap. And here are all the tools that I need to make these blind holes and tap them properly so that the screws will get enough purchase. And there's a piloted spindle tap wrench, which is a really great way of tapping, in my opinion, as it held in the drill press. Next up, I uh, marked out a position for the cylinder drain cock on the cylinder cap and then punched marked that, then located the punch mark with a wiggler in the mill and then drilled for the cylinder drain cock. The cylinder drain cock allows any water which is condensed to escape from the cylinder when the cylinder is warming up. It condenses when the cylinder is cold and if you have too much water trapped in the cylinder it can cause what's called a hydraulic lock which can create mischief to say the least with a steam engine or so I'm led to believe. The cylinder drain cock which you see here in situ releases all that water under pressure from the steam till the cylinder is hot and then you close it and then you run your engine. So I hope you enjoyed that short video. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you in the next installment.